It had been one of those perfect, unexpectedly sunny days in early spring where the light lingers just long enough to forget that a chill might follow. Casey and I had spent it ambling through the local art fair, laughing at quirky sculptures and debating over which food truck had the best tacos. It felt like a bubble of unreality, a single day stretched long and wide with the ease of friendship. But, as it often happens, the weather turned traitor on us. Just as we were making our way back across the campus, the sky darkened and unleashed a downpour that had us both soaked within minutes. We sprinted the last few blocks to Casey's apartment, our laughter ringing out as loudly as the rain. Look at us like two drowned rats, huh? Casey chuckled as we stood dripping in the shelter of their small porch. The wind whipped around us, cold and insistent, and I couldn't help but shiver. Going back in this state? Nah, you'll catch a cold for sure, Casey said, a hint of concern furrowing their brow. My place is just up ahead. You should come in, dry off a bit. I mean it. I hesitated, water dripping from my hair into my eyes. I don't know. Come on, don't be all shy and hesitant. It's just some warmth and a dry towel, they urged, pulling their keys from their pocket and unlocking the door. The warm light from inside seemed inviting, safe. Besides, I've got some tea brewing. It'll help with the chill. That did sound rather nice. Okay, one last push. I found myself agreeing as Casey led the way inside. Imagine a warm cup of tea, a comfy couch, and some fun conversation. Tempted yet? The apartment was a cozy, chaotic space, filled with the vibrant echoes of Casey's personality. Books piled on every surface, posters and photos plastered on the walls, a guitar leaning against the couch. It felt welcoming, like an extension of Casey themselves. As I wrapped a borrowed towel around my shoulders, Casey puttered around in the small kitchen. The smell of herbal tea filled the air, mingling with the scent of something sweet baking earlier. Moments later, they returned with two steaming mugs and a plate of cookies, which looked homemade and delicious. You've been looking out for me, walking me home and all. Least I can do is make sure you're not dripping all the way to your place, Casey said, handing me a mug. The warmth from the tea seeped into my hands, comforting against the residual cold. I took a hesitant sip, letting the warmth spread through me. It did feel cozy, sitting there with Casey, the rain pattering against the windows creating a kind of secluded world. Thanks for today. It turned out to be an unexpected little adventure. Maybe we should do it again sometime? Minus the rain, of course, I said, a smile finding its way onto my lips. Casey laughed. Okay, hold up a second. That towel? Clearly not doing the trick, you're still dripping. They stood, heading towards their bedroom. Look, I've got an idea. I know it's a little unconventional, but I could lend you some of my clothes just till yours dry off. Oh, come on, don't give me that look. You're not exactly the lumberjack type, you know? I bet you'd fit into them pretty nicely, they teased, a playful glint in their eye. I felt a blush creep up my neck. It's just clothes. Think of it as a fun little experiment. I was curious, admittedly. The idea of wearing something completely different, something so Casey, was oddly thrilling. Come on, be adventurous, Casey cajoled, already pulling open drawers and rifling through their wardrobe. Besides, I've always thought you had the kind of frame that could pull off, well, pretty much anything. With a mixture of nerves and excitement bubbling in my stomach, I nodded. All right, let's see what fashion adventure awaits. As I changed out of my wet clothes into something dry and distinctly not mine, I couldn't help but feel a strange sense of anticipation. What began as a simple day out had spiraled into something entirely unexpected. But as I looked at myself in the mirror, Casey's clothes hanging differently on my frame than they did on theirs, I couldn't help but smile. This was going to be an interesting evening. As Casey rummaged through their closet, they pulled out an array of clothing, each piece more intriguing than the last. Here, try these on, they suggested, handing me a pair of skinny jeans and a soft pastel crop top. The fabric felt foreign yet exciting as I held them up against myself, a stark contrast to my usual muted baggy attire. Initially, I hesitated at the mirror, the jeans fitting snugly, defining lines and curves I usually didn't emphasize. 
The crop top left little to the imagination, clinging softly to my midriff. I felt exposed, vulnerable, yet there was an undeniable thrill in seeing myself this way, a version of me I'd never considered before. Casey, noticing my hesitation, chuckled lightly. You look great, really, they reassured, their voice a mix of amusement and encouragement. But we're not done yet. Let's really embrace this look. The playful tone in Casey's voice eased my initial discomfort. They approached with a makeup bag, their hands skilled and confident. Trust me? They asked, a mischievous twinkle in their eye. I nodded, curiosity getting the better of my apprehension. As Casey worked, they explained each step, from the light foundation that made my skin seem flawlessly smooth, to the subtle eyeshadow that enhanced my eyes, making them appear larger, more expressive. I watched in the mirror, fascinated as my features transformed under their expert touch. When they finished with a swipe of mascara and a gloss that made my lips shine, I barely recognized the person staring back at me. Now for the final touch, Casey said, producing a wig from a box on a high shelf. It was long and wavy, a rich chestnut color that shimmered under the light. As they fitted it onto my head, adjusting it to sit just right, a new image solidified in the mirror. The person looking back was still me, but not a version I had ever imagined could exist. The transformation wasn't just physical. As I saw myself in the clothes, makeup, and wig, my initial self-consciousness melted away, replaced by a playful confidence. I twirled in front of the mirror, the clothes hugging my body in new, unfamiliar ways. Casey clapped and laughed, their delight infectious. See? What did I tell you? You'd rock this look! Casey grinned, stepping back to admire their handiwork. I couldn't help but laugh, too, the sound bubbling up from a place of genuine amusement and joy. This is crazy, Casey. I would never have thought. That's the fun of it, isn't it? Casey interrupted, their voice softening. Sometimes seeing ourselves in a different light helps us discover parts of our identity we never knew existed. It's all fluid, Jamie. Just roles we try on, see how they fit, and decide what feels right. Their words struck a chord within me, stirring thoughts about the roles I had confined myself to without question. Was I only adhering to what was expected of me? The evening had started as a simple escape from the rain, but now it was delving into something much deeper, explorations of self and the fluidity of identity. We spent the rest of the evening playing with different poses and expressions, each snapshot capturing another facet of this newly unveiled persona. Casey's apartment, once just a place to dry off and warm up, had transformed into a stage for self-discovery, and I felt a profound gratitude for the unexpected journey. As the laughter died down and we settled onto the couch with another round of tea, the weight of the transformation lingered in the air between us. I was still me, but tonight had shown me that I could also be more, that the boundaries of who I thought I was could be pushed and played with, and that perhaps identity wasn't as fixed as I had once believed. Sitting cross-legged on Casey's couch, wrapped in the warmth of an oversized sweater that smelled faintly of lavender and something uniquely Casey, I felt an unexpected sense of liberation. The fabric against my skin, the gentle weight of the wig, even the slight stickiness of the lip gloss, all of it made me feel strangely free, it was as if stepping into this new persona peeled back layers of myself that I had neatly folded and tucked away without really understanding why. Casey sat beside me, their eyes kind and curious, sipping slowly from their mug. The room was filled with the soft glow of evening. The storm had passed, leaving a quiet calm in its wake. You know, Jamie, it's interesting how clothes and a bit of makeup can make us see ourselves so differently, Casey mused, breaking the comfortable silence. I nodded, my mind still processing the reflections in the mirror from earlier. It's weird, but I feel good, Casey. Not just comfortable, liberated, in a way. Like I'm stepping out from behind a curtain I didn't even know was there. Casey smiled, their expression understanding. It's all about expression, isn't it? We're taught to fit into these neat little boxes based on what society expects. But it's all just fluid, isn't it? Gender, identity, it's more complex and beautiful than we give it credit for. Their words opened a door to a room of thoughts I had never really allowed myself to explore. 
we delved into deep conversation about how society shapes our views of ourselves and each other, how the roles we play can be both comforting and constrictive. We talked about the masks we wear and how sometimes it takes wearing a different mask to understand the one we've always had on. As the night deepened, so did our conversation. We shared personal stories of moments when we felt confined by expectations and dreams of who we might become if we were brave enough to ignore those boundaries. Casey talked about their journey, how experimenting with their expression had been a path to understanding their non-binary identity. Listening to Casey, I felt a bond forming, or perhaps strengthening between us. It was one thing to share hobbies and coursework, another to share parts of ourselves that we were still exploring, still questioning. It was like finding a safe harbor in a sea of uncertainty where we could anchor our experiences and know they would be understood. I've always appreciated how open you are, Casey. It's, it's really helped me tonight, more than I can say. I admitted, feeling a weight lifting off my chest. Exploring this side of me, even just for fun, it's opened up something new inside. I feel like I'm seeing parts of me for the first time. Casey reached out, squeezing my shoulder gently. That's what friends are for, right? To help each other explore and discover the parts of ourselves that we're too scared to face alone. And Jamie, I'm really glad we could share this together. Their words, simple yet profound, resonated with a truth that felt as real and tangible as the clothes I wore. In that moment, surrounded by the remnants of our playful transformation, I felt a profound gratitude not just for the clothes and the makeup, but for the friendship that allowed me to explore without fear, to question without judgment, and to imagine a self that was continually evolving. As the evening turned to night, we continued to talk, our conversation a mixture of laughter and deep reflection, a testament to the trust and understanding that had deepened between us. This experiment had started as a simple escape from the rain, but it had blossomed into a journey of self-discovery and mutual support, a shared adventure that promised to reshape the way we saw the world and ourselves within it. As our evening of self-discovery began to wind down, Casey, with a mischievous glint returning to their eyes, teased a new adventure. Imagine us going out like this, hitting the malls, trying on the craziest outfits we can find, they chuckled, pulling up their phone to show me pictures of eccentric, vibrant fashion styles that seemed both daunting and thrilling. Their excitement was infectious, and I found myself laughing along, the earlier apprehension replaced by a burgeoning curiosity. And not just shopping, Casey continued, their voice bubbling with ideas. We could go to university events, maybe a themed party, show up in styles that turn heads and start conversations. What do you think, Jamie? Ready to be a trendsetter? The thought was exhilarating, stepping out into the world in these new personas, challenging the whispers and stares with confidence and a shared defiance. The idea of breaking boundaries, not just within, but out there, in the real world, felt like a daring challenge one that seemed a little less daunting with Casey by my side. As we started to tidy up the array of makeup products and clothing, our conversation drifted to plans for future escapades. We should make a list of all the things we've been too scared to try, all the places we felt we didn't fit in, I suggested, excitement rising with each new idea. Let's not just blend in, let's stand out and be proud of it, Casey nodded, enthusiasm lighting up their features. Absolutely, and no matter what, we'll be there for each other, right? No backing down when it gets tough. We've got to push each other to be our most authentic selves, no matter how that looks. The solidarity in Casey's words grounded the swirling excitement with a sense of purpose. This wasn't just about having fun with fashion. It was about asserting our identities, supporting each other in the face of norms that no longer felt binding. It was a pact, not just a friendship, but of mutual bravery. We'll be like pioneers, I said, half joking, but feeling the weight of the truth in it. Explorers of our own identities, charting courses through unmarked territories. Exactly, Casey agreed, their voice strong and sure. And who knows, maybe we'll inspire someone else out there who's watching, wondering if they can do the same. 
maybe will be the courage they need to see. As the night drew to a close, the air between us filled with the soft, comfortable silence of shared understanding and anticipation. We had opened doors for each other that evening, doors to new expressions and new possibilities. The journey ahead would undoubtedly challenge us, but it was a challenge we had promised to meet together. As I finally left Casey's apartment, stepping out into the crisp night air that had followed the rainstorm, the world felt different, bigger somehow, and less intimidating. The streets were quiet, the earlier tempest having washed them clean, a fitting metaphor for the evening's transformations. Reflecting on the night, I felt a profound gratitude for the serendipity of the rainstorm that had started it all. What had begun as a refuge from the weather had blossomed into a sanctuary for growth. Casey and I, in our shared laughter and revelations, had found not just acceptance, but a joyful defiance against the constraints we'd once accepted without question. As I walked home, the cool air felt like a promise, a whisper of future adventures that awaited us. With each step, I felt more certain of the path ahead, fortified by the bond we had strengthened and the promises we had made. To challenge, to support, and to embrace whatever selves we chose to be, in a world that was slowly, but surely, becoming our own. As the days turned into weeks, the seeds planted during that transformative, rain-soaked evening began to bloom in ways Casey and I could have scarcely imagined. Each step we took out into the world, whether clad in daring new outfits or simply carrying the inner confidence we had nurtured, felt like a testament to our journey of self-discovery and acceptance. We began to document our adventures, snapping photos and sharing stories of our escapades, from the exhilarating rush of walking into a party dressed in styles that defied expectations, to the quiet moments spent in cafes, discussing books and art that mirrored our own evolving narratives, each instance was a stitch in the vibrant tapestry of our friendship. With every outing, our comfort in our own skins deepened, and so did our bond. The laughter that had once echoed through Casey's apartment during our first daring swap of clothes now spilled into our everyday interactions, a reminder of the ease and understanding we had cultivated. Our friendship had become a harbor, a place where we could both be our truest selves without fear or apology. Alongside the joy, there were challenges, sideways glances, whispered comments, moments when the world seemed determined to remind us of its stringent norms, but these, too, we met with humor and the mutual respect that had become the cornerstone of our relationship. For every frown we encountered, we shared a joke. For every question, a conversation. We were not just defying norms, we were defining our own. As our confidence grew, so did our circle. Others, drawn by the authenticity and joy with which we approached our lives, began to join us. What started as a duo on a rainy night had grown into a community, a collective of individuals inspired to explore and express their identities in new, freeing ways. The culmination of our journey came unexpectedly, at a university event where Casey and I were invited to speak about our experiences with identity and expression. Standing before an audience of peers, professors, and newcomers, we shared our story, from the stormy night that started it all to the myriad ways in which we had grown and helped others grow since. The applause that followed was not just for our words, but for the journey that those words represented. It was a validation of every uncertain step we had taken, every boundary we had pushed, and every norm we had challenged. It was a celebration of the freedom to express oneself and the transformative power of friendship. As we stepped off the stage, Casey squeezed my hand, a wordless reminder of the pact we had made to support each other through every challenge and cheer for each other with every victory. We did it, Jamie, Casey whispered, a gleam of pride and joy in their eyes. We did, I agreed, feeling a surge of gratitude for the friend beside me, the path behind us, and the uncharted paths ahead. Our story, which had begun with a simple act of kindness and a shared sense of adventure, had blossomed into a narrative of empowerment, a reminder that the most profound journeys often begin with the smallest steps. And as we walked back through the crowd, our hands linked, the cheers of our newfound community echoing around us, I realized that this conclusion was not an end but a gateway, 
It was an invitation to continue exploring, to keep pushing boundaries, and to forever cherish the joy of sharing life's adventures with a trusted friend. In a world that often demanded conformity, we had found liberation in the joy of defiance and the strength of togetherness. This was not just our conclusion, it was our ongoing commitment to live freely and authentically no matter what lay ahead.